All right, good morning and happy Monday, traders. Um, but I wanted to start with the chart of SPY up and with a quote from you know, a famed economist, John Maynard Keynes. And the quote is that markets can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. And that's quite self-explanatory with the chart of SPY up here. Um, but basically why I put it up is because, as you know, last week, uh, SPY overall market was up close to 6%. And 6% you know, in a single week is not a regular occurrence, to say the least. Um, and from chatting with other traders um, and gauging some sentiment um, and opinions um, on X, you know, formerly Twitter, you know, it, it seems like many traders got, got burned last week, um, you know, fighting the markets and fading the market because, you know, it was simply up too much. Um, and, and some people had developed a strong bias. Um, so before we get into any plans, I just wanted to drop the above quote, um, really as a reminder for, for you, a reminder for myself that we just always need to respect price action, all right? Be open-minded, seek edge and confirmation. Um, and, and really that should be the takeaway from last week, along with reviewing the opportunity. Um, but that should be the takeaway uh, from last week and especially going forward, all right? It's important to keep that um, really in the front of your mind. Let's do a quick snapshot review from last week. Obviously, we had the idea from the watches and the queues for a bounce. Um, I wanted to push closer to the rising 200 day. We never got that entry and uh, snapback reversal. What we did get instead was a nice consolidation and then the breakthrough 350, which was outlined as a bit of an inflection level. And obviously we got a strong move up, queues were up I think close to six and a half percent last week. So overall, the idea that the queues in the short term was a bit stretched to the downside, looking for a bounce, um, you know, that played out very well, didn't get the entry and setup I was looking for, but the overall idea played out well. Um, I'm not going to spend time on that though, because that was covered a lot and in detail over the weekend um, and last week online, um, with a lot of people posting some in-depth reviews and analysis. So let's look at HUBC. So HUBC, obviously I outlined multiple different opportunities and setups in this, um, you know, open-minded, uh, an opportunity for the long and short side uh, and different um, entry setups and scenarios. Um, and if you want to kind of understand my thought process and those ideas a little bit more in detail, um, just refer back to last week's watch list. Um, but essentially, of the breaking above resistance, which was 80, outlined as well from last week, the stock failed to base above, it failed to spend any time above this level, you know, which would have um, signaled that resistance had turned into support. And within just a few hours, it had broken back into the range and failed to hold above resistance. So that's a false breakout, also known as a stuff setup, um, and essentially trapped a bunch of longs above this level, failed, got back in, supply enters the fray. And um, this is one of my favorite short setups actually, both for swing and intraday. So from the watch list uh, last week, as I mentioned, once the stock, stock confirmed the stuff and traded back near the low end of the range, which is around 70, um, that's where I'd be looking to enter a short position. Um, and the stock gave multiple um, opportunities, especially the following day on pops to 75. Um, as I said, I'd be looking to risk to 80 cents from the uh, post last week. And again, gave excellent opportunities on that um, with lower high pops, risking against 80 cents. And then the target for a multi-day swing short was into 40 cents. Didn't obviously tap 40 cents, but right into the close from last week, we came right into um, mid 40s, which, you know, was, um, you know, give or take right at the target. So that was already good opportunity. Um, and it's, it's, this is a textbook example um, of a false breakout um, and a good risk reward opportunity for the short swing. So some fresh ideas for this week. I'll start off with cues. This is a tricky, bit of a tricky opportunity, more for the experienced trader. Um, but with that being said, last week I was obviously long biased as I thought um, we were stretched to the downside. Now I think we're a little bit stretched in the opposite direction. Um, and, you know, it's, as I mentioned, tricky. It's a highly conditional idea. It's one that I'll only act on if it matches my criteria and it provides a very well um, defined level to risk against. Um, but essentially, you know, sticking to its trend of making lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower high, lower low. And now I'm looking for another lower high within this consolidation. You can switch to the hourly chart, which aligns well. So basically, 
I'm looking for the queues to confirm a lower high around the 370-ish area this week. And if the queues consolidate near this level, all right, then there's no trade for me. And obviously, if it breaks over 370s and holds, or if, if it breaks above the previous lower high, 373.74, um, then obviously there's no trade and this idea is just not valid. But if we do push into the 370 area um, within the next day or two, um, and if we fail intraday, then I'm gonna be on the lookout for a possible entry. Um, and you know, a failure, for example, could be if we push into 370, fail, and we take out the morning low or the low of day, and we make a new low of day, and then we you know, fail to reclaim intraday VWAP, uh, we make consecutive lower highs and we consolidate near the low of day, um, then that would provide me with some confirmation and a level to risk against in terms of the high of day. Um, things to also keep an eye on for this idea. Um, definitely want to keep an eye on some of the top holders of queues, right? So that's going to be your Apple, your Microsoft, your Amazon, see how they're performing, look for relative strength weakness versus other sectors, as well as also kind of gauge the performance against the overall market and SPY to identify relative strength and weakness. Um, these are all small um, small factors that could really uh, turn the opportunity from being um, you know, a B plus to an A, for example. So obviously in the event of a lower high, if that's confirmed, I'd look to get short risking against the high of the day, which um, um, high of the day intraday, all right? That would be a lower high versus this lower high. Um, and I'd be looking for about a 50% retracement, but I'm not looking at this low. I'm using kind of this 350 area, which is where we broke out from. We got a nice uptick in volume on that day. So I'm looking at 350 to 370, which is a 20 point move. So I'd be looking for kind of a 10 point move right back into this 360 ish area as a potential target. All right, I'm not looking for the market to crash. I'm not looking for a huge correction. I'm just looking for a pullback move because we've gotten a little bit extended in a short period of time here to the upside. Um, and this would most likely be a multi-day, two, two to three day uh, move as long as we remain in a downtrend, you know, upon confirmation of the overall idea. So some side watches as well, because the queues will take up a lot of my time with the overall market and a lot of other names um, that I'd be looking at as well. Uh, Microsoft, Palantir, Roku, just a few additional names on my watch list. EJH, I'll mention there are a couple in the watch list. So I do recommend going to the... Um, weekly watches, the link will be below the written format to see all of these ideas and commentary in more detail. But I'll touch on EJH, and this is interesting to me because of the chart pattern and the sustained consistent volume. All right, so, so a, a chart pattern like this reminds me a lot of, of OTC pump and dump stocks. Now, I'm definitely not saying that this is a pump and dump stock. Um, you know, this is just my opinion. Um, but that's just what the setup and the chart pattern looks like with the sustained volume, with a very contracted and tight, steady uptrend. Um, and so for me, that's what it reminds me of. And I'm looking for similar confirmation um, that I'd be looking for with those plays, as well as some of the Chinese liquidation plays that we've seen in the past. Um, so basically what I'm looking for is either for this to break the trend, break two, and I want to see um, sustained heavy volume enter. Um, and I want to see intraday sustained heavy volume. All right, and if that had to happen, I'd be looking to get short versus the high of day um, or the previous lower high, for example, uh, intraday. Uh, and for something like this, you know, the move started around one, volume came in around one, I'd be looking for a move um, back to low ones, one as a target, something like this. Potentially could happen intraday, it could take two days, um, but this is something I'll just have alerts set, alerts for price and alerts for volume. Also using hard stops. I always use hard stops uh, for all of my swing trades because obviously uh, these are lengthy trades. I'm not actively watching once I, once I enter the position. Um, sometimes you set it and you forget it as long as there's confirmation. But especially for something like this, something on the more um, small smaller cap side of things, um, something with sustained volume, um, you know, relative for the stock. But obviously um, there could be some um, liquidity issues. Uh, in the event of a short squeeze. So um, this is something where I'll use a hard stop. I'll be um, definitely wary of it. Might size a little bit down um, just to manage risk a little bit better if the liquidity is still a little bit sketchy intraday. But again, looking for absolute confirmation, looking for sustained heavy volume and liquidity um, and um, a break of this trend line. So this is something that I'm watching um, for a potential liquidation play. 
Um, and that rounds it up. If you'd like to uh, see additional commentary, more in-depth commentary and, and get a bit better understanding as well as an additional name, um, then I recommend checking out the written format. Good luck this week and I'll see you next week.